Now you guys know that when it comes to making fun of watchmakers, I spare no one. That's right, I'll make fun of all y'all. You can all get it, I do not care. But, there seems to be some watchmakers you're actually allowed to make fun of and no one will bat an eye, right? You complain about Rolex, everyone's cool with it. You complain about Longa and their stupid pre-qualification lists, no one will, you know, come to their aid. Everybody is fine with making fun of certain watchmakers, but there are other watchmakers that you're not allowed to talk about at all. Uh, you dick, critique them! You will be destroyed. It is. 2.23 p.m. Let's get down to business. Now, I know all the Tudor fanboys out there are already sweating, they're getting hot and bothered, but just rest assured, you can protect your skin with an uncomplicated skincare routine from Tiege Hanley. That's right, this episode is sponsored by Tiege Hanley. Tiege Hanley, uncomplicated skincare for men. Guys, I'm not gonna speak for every dude out there, but just personally speaking, uh, you know, full skincare routine is kinda out of my wheelhouse, all right? My girl will come home with all these different products and she has schedules of when to put what on and this and that and yada 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 and it's just kind of intimidating and it's honestly kind of turned me off of the idea of having a full intensive skincare routine. It's just not something that I thought I would ever integrate into my daily life, but this is where Tiege Hanley has truly come into play. When I say an uncomplicated skincare routine, I mean they have a few products and it's labeled very simply when and how you use it. They literally cannot make it any more simple. Guys, I'm a dude that spends a lot of time in this little office with all of these electronics, all of these lights, these cameras, these screens, and when I first started this channel, it did a number on my skin. But ever since I started using these Tiege Hanley products, and you know, taking it kind of seriously, um, it hasn't felt like I've been doing a lot. I've just been using these products as they've said. I mean, okay, there's the stuff for your eyes that I put on my eyes. Uh, there's facial scrub, uh, there's face wash, use daily, use twice a week. It's literally spelt out for me and I don't really have to think about it. So I haven't been doing a lot, but it feels like I have a like, fully advanced skincare routine and it's really cleaned up my skin. So if you wanna look gorgeous and beautiful like me, uh, if you wanna have a legit skincare routine but not have to really focus on anything, please click the link in my description below and check out Tiege Hanley. Now, for my viewers, everyone that orders something through my link will get a free gift along with your order. So Tiege Hanley is, again, trying to provide some good value to my viewers and we truly do appreciate it. So guys, please click the link in the description below and support the people who support this channel. Uh, we really would appreciate it. Thank you, Tiege Hanley, for sponsoring us. All right, let's get back into the episode. Now, if you were to imagine the quintessential watch snob, you probably think of someone stepping out of a Maybach and ooh, they have a mink coat on and they have a cigarette holder. I'm, I'm thinking of Cruella de Vil for some reason, I don't know why. But this hypothetical watch snob is, you know, wearing some crazy unobtainium precious metal. You'll never be able to get one. Something from the Holy Trinity, maybe Longa, maybe Creeder even. Uh, it's just going to be super duper pricey and they're going to be looking down at the hoi polloi. Anything that's not a six figure watch. <laughs> So I don't think anybody would argue that archetype of a watch snob, yeah, that's reasonable. Uh, but for some reason, nowadays, 2021, according to some portion of the internet, a watch snob is anyone that dares have an opinion about anything, or just anyone that's willing to joke about something. Congratulations, you're a snob. You see, there are fans of things, and then there are fanboys. They are not the same. You see, a fan is an avid enthusiast of a certain watchmaker. They will pay attention and probably partake of various products of a watchmaker they're fond of. But at the end of the day, they're still based within reason. Uh, they're still grounded. They still have some self-awareness about them. They're willing to joke. They're willing to be critical at times. They're willing to call a spade a spade. And hey, they're not going to take themselves or the watchmaker they love too seriously. Nothing wrong with being a fan, 
but fanboys. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fanboys are staunch defenders of the watchmakers they are beholden to. They love them. They love them so much that anything that can be even construed as criticism will be met with the harshest of personal attacks. There is no depth that is too deep. There is no height that is too high. There is no fire too hot when it comes to defending a fanboy's watchmaker. You know, you make fun of Invicta's like enormous offerings, the uh, Zeus Bolt, I think it is. The one that we always show and I go <laughs> Dumpster fires, dumpster fires. <laughs> These crazy freaking Invictas. And most Invicta owners will laugh with you. It's like, we're not talking about the Invicta Pro Diver here. A lot of the people I know that are part of my channel membership own Invicta Pro Divers, and they also will laugh at these crazy, disgusting, huge, oversized Invictas. You make fun of Vostok's quality control, or lack thereof, and Vostok gang will typically debate you about the, the watches themselves. That's respectable, that's reasonable. I mean, they're delusional. I mean, but, but you gotta respect it. Them finding a way to convince themselves that having a gross, gritty, metal-on-metal -metal bezel and having a wobbly crown, uh, that's actually part of the design and they it was deliberate, they meant it. Hey, that's totally delusional, but you gotta respect it. And the guys will debate you on the watch's design itself. They're not gonna personally attack you. I love Vostok, gang. But you so much as utter the word Rolex in front of a Tudor fanboy, big mistake. They will immediately kick into gear, defending Tudor. They'll call you every name in the book and all you did was just say the word Rolex. Like in one of my recent Instagram reels, I made a joke. All I said was Tudor is not Rolex. Most people listening to that will just be like, Okay? Because it's just an objective statement. It's just a fact. It's no different than saying Breitling is not Casio. Again, most people will hear that and say, yeah, they're different. But for a Tudor fanboy, they hear that and their insecurities just start bubbling to the surface. That very benign statement just rocks their fragile sensibilities to the core. And all of this prompts them to just go on the full offensive. For Tudor! Look guys, I'm gonna be clear. We're gonna talk about me real quick. <laughs> like, please, let me. I started this channel so I could talk about me, all right? I'm a Seiko fan, right? I've been a Seiko fan since I started this channel back in 2017, but I'm incredibly critical of Seiko. Like, I, Seiko is a company I complain about regularly. I mean, what they've been doing with their price structure and their uh, discontinuing and then, uh, like, recreations of certain watches, but changing the series and lines that they're in, putting Prospects logos and then Presage logos on certain things. Oh, and then Pros Prospects LX and blah, 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 blah. We get it, Seiko. You're, you're trying to move on up. I complain about it all the time. I think it's stupid. It's frustrating. Seiko is not the uh, entry-level powerhouse, the bang per buck monster that we thought they were. They're just, you know, they're trying to move up in the world. Hey, you gotta respect it. Or when we consider Rolex, okay? I'm a Rolex collector, but still, Rolex is one of the watchmakers that I bash more than anything nowadays. I think, um, you know, out of all of my uh, Instagram reels and these YouTube shorts, I think Rolex is the number one watchmaker that I make fun of. They are the butt of most of my jokes and no one bats an eye. But the second I mention Tudor and Rolex in the same sentence, literally the second I say Tudor is not Rolex, oh my God, I'm the bad guy. Duh. So why do we have to treat Tudor with kid gloves? What is it about Tudor watches that makes these fanboys feel vulnerable? Is it that they own a Tudor and maybe they perhaps wanted a watch from a different watchmaker? Is it that they maybe kind of agree deep down with the criticism that we give Tudor, but they don't want to kind of come to terms with that? I don't know. I don't know what it is. If you guys have some perspective, please leave it in the comment section. Again, comments really do help my channel, but I, I do want to hear from you. But it's a bummer, like all in all, because I don't think Tudor is above reproach. I don't think any watchmaker is above reproach. 
And I love making fun of everything. That's what's fun about the hobby. You should, like, it, guys, don't take any of this too seriously. For instance, right now, I am wearing, uh, if I can get it in focus, uh, my G-Shock Mudmaster triple sensor. All right? This is like a huge, ginormous piece of resin on the wrist. It is just one huge watch, and, and a lot of people hate it. A lot of people are like, oh, how can you wear that Tonka truck on your wrist? I get it, but I love this watch. Dude, we can make fun of things. We can acknowledge things. We can poke fun of at certain things. It's not going to, like, believe me, people making fun of the Rolex, or the Rolex, people making fun of Rolex, or people making fun of JLC, or people making fun of G-Shocks, these are things I love, but I'm not going to take it personally because I think that that's what makes this hobby fun. So please leave me a comment below and let me know what is going on and, and what makes Tudor so fragile. All right, there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I hope it didn't upset too many of your of, of you Tudor fanboys out there. But if you do feel your skin getting all greasy and yucky, please hit up my people over at Tiege Hanley and get yourself some uncomplicated skincare for men. All right, guys, thanks for checking out this episode. Thanks for checking out my other channel, T3 Time to Drive, for all you automotive enthusiasts. Thank you for checking out my Amazon affiliate store where we have uh, modern watches, we have watch toolkits, watch straps, watch winders, everything for the watch collector out there. We also have a bunch of really cool luxury items over at the thetimetellershop.com. Everything there is hand-picked by me and uh, you're really going to want to check out my personal website again, timetellershop.com, thetimetellershop.com. All right, guys, I love you. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. <laughs>